There is nothing we could possibly gain from a military confrontation with Vladimir Putin, and there's very much we could lose, including, of course, many thousands of American lives. But that doesn't mean Joe Biden won't do it. Biden is unpopular, he's incompetent, and he's desperate. But more than anything, Joe Biden is weak. He is a pawn of his staff and the hard-eyed ideologues who surround him. Russia is currently involved in a border dispute with neighboring Ukraine. Many of Biden's closest aides are pushing the United States to get involved militarily. Now, among the many, many ironies here is that the Ukraine crisis was largely created by Joe Biden's own aides and many people like them throughout all levels of the U.S. government. So here's the Russian position. For Russia, the core question is NATO. NATO is the post-war military alliance created in 1949 to keep the Soviets from invading Western Europe, and it worked pretty well for about 40 years. But the Soviet Union has not existed in more than three decades. It's part of history now. And yet NATO very much lives on, better funded than ever. It is an army without a purpose. So at this point, NATO exists primarily to torment Vladimir Putin, who, whatever his many faults, has no intention of invading Western Europe. Vladimir Putin does not want Belgium. He just wants to keep his Western border secure. That's why he doesn't want Ukraine to join NATO. And that makes sense. Imagine how we would feel if Mexico and Canada became satellites of China. We wouldn't like that at all. In Russia's case, this is an existential question. A NATO takeover of Ukraine would compromise Russia's access to its Sebastopol naval base. That's the site of the Russian Black Sea Fleet and one of the country's only connections to international waters. In the words of Russia scholar Richard Sakwa, if Russia lost the Sevastopol naval base, it would be, quote, the biggest military geopolitical defeat of Russia in the last thousand years. So for Vladimir Putin, that's unacceptable. It's a disaster. He cannot let it happen. He will not let it happen. But for the United States, and this is the main point here, there would be no benefit either. The United States would gain precisely nothing from taking over Ukraine. Why would we want to do that? At best, we'd be driving Russia, and we are, in fact, deeper into the arms of the government of China. And that would be a disaster for the United States and a disaster for the world. So why are we doing this? Why is the U.S. government pushing Ukraine to join NATO? Well, God knows why. But we are doing this. Both parties are doing this. The neocons around Joe Biden are for it, of course, as they are for every sinister and stupid idea. But so is former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, a smart man. So is Ohio Senator Rob Portman. So are many Republicans. So this is a bipartisan sort of insanity. The question is, can Joe Biden stand up to it? And the answer is, come on. Biden has always been more lobbyist than leader. He says what he's told to say. Once it was the credit card companies in Delaware that wrote his scripts. Now it's the neocons at the State Department. It's the same idea. Biden spoke today with Vladimir Putin by video call, and according to the White House, he informed the Russian leader that the United States plans to control Ukraine no matter what. Secretary of State and struggling pop musician Tony Blinken repeated that message. He threatened to send American troops there. Here's Tony Blinken's spokesman. If Russia chooses to fail to de-escalate, if Russia chooses to move forward uh, with any plans uh, it may have developed uh, to uh, continue its military aggression or to aggress militarily uh, upon Ukraine, to violate Ukraine's uh, sovereignty, its independence, its territorial integrity, uh, we and our allies would be prepared to act. We would be prepared to act resolutely. <laughs> These such children. Ukraine's territorial integrity. That's the concern. That's what this is really about, they're telling us. Because if there's one thing the Biden White House cares about, it's secure borders, at least in Eastern Europe, where borders are not racist. Ukraine's borders must be defended. It would be immoral to open those borders to the world and allow, say, tens of thousands of unemployed Haitians to pour across. We can't allow that. In fact, we will send American troops to Ukraine to prevent that. Open borders are only permitted in Texas, Arizona, and California, and anywhere else the potential Democratic voters might arrive uninvited from the third world. But Ukraine? No. Ukraine is a God-given right to territorial integrity, and American soldiers will die to defend that territorial integrity. That's our official position as a country. Now, according to CNN, we must stop these Russian attacks on the sacred borders of Ukraine, because if we don't stop them, what we could have here is what CNN is calling a dire security situation. 
Now, that phrase apparently comes from Joe Biden's undersecretary of state, Toria Newland, who, according to CNN, gave a, quote, gloomy briefing to U.S. senators last night. Now, Toria Newland is strongly in favor of war with Russia. What's amazing is that anyone, anywhere, is still listening to her. No serious person could take Victoria Newland seriously. She's a joke. Not only is she obviously unimpressive as a person, ask anyone who knows her, and she's not especially pro-American, by the way, she was one of the architects of the disaster in Iraq. So why is Toria Newland still talking about foreign policy? Is the guy who designed Chernobyl still building nuclear reactors? Probably not. Only in Washington, where failure is assiduously rewarded, could someone like Victoria Newland still wield power, which she absolutely does. It's scary when you think about it. Toria Newland is driving our Ukraine policy, which of course is being justified by our broader support for, quote, democracy. Now keep that in mind as you listen to this. This is the same, the same Toria Newland who was caught on tape several years ago scheming about how to end democracy in Ukraine. Here's Newland in a leaked audio recording plotting the overthrow of Ukraine's democratically elected president. Listen as Newland rattles off a list of potential puppets to install in place of the democratically elected I president. I think Yats is the guy who's got the economic experience, the governing experience. He's, he's the guy, you know, what he needs is Cleach and Tani Book on the outside. He needs to be talking to them four times a week, you know. I, I just think Cleach going in, he's going to be at that level working for Yatsenyuk. It's just not going to work. Yeah, no, I think that's, you know? I think that's right. Okay. It's just not going to work. What about the voters of Ukraine who thought they were engaged in democracy? No, nope, there's Tory Newland working to overthrow democracy. Keep in mind, if they'll do it there, they will do it here. You're hearing the same State Department goon who worked to organize a coup in Ukraine telling us we need to go to war with Russia to preserve democracy in Ukraine. These people have no shame. So the question is, what is this really about? Of course, it's not about democracy, for which they have zero respect. Well, in part, it's a hangover from the lunatic Russia hoax that absorbed Washington for three years. Everything about Vladimir Putin is bad, therefore, let's have a war with him. A lot of people think that. But there's also a deeper cause here that's rarely noted. For years, Ukrainian interests have pumped millions of lobbying dollars into Washington, D.C. to change American foreign policy in the region. At one point, as you may have heard, they employed the president's own son to repeat their talking points. So tens of thousands of dollars a month to tell us that Russia is bad and we need to stand with Ukraine because democracy, even as we work to overthrow democracy in Ukraine. So with that in mind, now that you know that, maybe you were not so surprised when Joe Biden concluded that Vladimir Putin doesn't possess a soul. You said you know he doesn't have a soul. Well, I did say that to him, yes. And, to, and his response was, we understand one another. I wouldn't be a wise guy. I was alone with him in his office. That's how it came about. It was when President Bush had said, I've looked in his eyes and saw a soul. I said, look in your eyes, and I don't think you have a soul. And looked back at me and said, we understand each other. So you know Vladimir Putin. You think he's a killer? Mm-hmm. I do. These people are children. Again, children pretending to be leaders. Vladimir Putin's a killer! Presumably unlike every other head of state on Earth through all human history. But honestly, that is not the relevant question. Vladimir Putin's soul? Who cares? We can leave that to his priest, assuming he has one. The only question that matters, the only question, is how does intervening in Ukraine help the core interests of the United States? And of course, that is the one question no one in Washington is asking.